Butch Carlino, BYU's point guard, made it when it mattered to keep the Cougars from falling on the road. General Steed, the nation's leading dime dealer, surged Our Lady Cougars to victory. And keep on rocking, the United Students section will now extend from the hard court to the gridiron. I'm Carson McKinley. And I'm Corey Aldis. Get ready for tip-off. It's time for the tube. Carson, it's our very first Coug Tube of the year. All right, so excited. I'm super pumped. And it's a big weekend of sports coming up for BYU. We got volleyball tonight and tomorrow, as well as basketball. Yeah, we had that close win last night. Let's go ahead and take another look at that. At this point, every game is critical for the men's basketball team. ESPN Joe Lenardi has BYU squarely on the bubble in his latest bracket projection, and that means the Cougs can't afford a bad loss. They came in close last night in Malibu. It was high tide early. The Waves jumped out to an early lead behind junior Nico Scowen. Norwegian nailed a career high four three pointers and Pepperdine led by as many as 12. Their fans happy about that. BYU roared back and capped off their comeback with this huge long ball from Matt Carlino. 15 seconds left. Cougs up four. All they need to do is wait for the clock to run out, but they foul the three point shooter. One and a half seconds left. Jordan Baker hits the first two freebies and misses the last one on purpose. They try to get the tip in and just short. BYU escapes, their big dance hopes hanging by a thread. The Rock will be a welcome sight for the road weary Cougars on Saturday. BYU will host Santa Clara after three straight road games. And again, they need to win to stay in the bubble for the NCAA tournament. Gotta like their chances. The Cougars home record under coach Dave Rose is a ridiculous 112 and nine. That's just stupid good. But despite an 18-point win earlier this year, Santa Clara is no punching bag. The Broncos boast a killer combo in seniors Kevin Foster and Mark Trazzolini. The pair combined for 39 of the team's 64 points in the first meeting. Trazzolini played like a caged animal inside, gobbled up 14 boards, including six on the offensive glass, as a way to a double-double. The rest of the team didn't do so hot the first time out, shooting 23%. The Santa Clara supporting cast can heat up. Look out. BYU head coach Dave Rose is looking to make back-to-back -back Final Four appearances in the Coaches vs. Cancer Charity Challenge. Rose is competing against 47 other coaches from around the country, and fans can vote once per day from now until February 27th. The coach with the most votes in each region advances to the Final Four with a chance to win hundred grand for their respective charity. Women's basketball collided with the WCC co-leader from St. Mary's last night for a much-needed win. The Cougars are undefeated at home but struggled out of the gate. The Gales attacked the paint early and often. Here's Jackie Nard going in for two. St. Mary's was up by seven at one point in the first half, but Haley Steed hits this buzzer beater to cut the lead to three. Picking things up in the second half, the Cougar bigs were in foul trouble, and with 8-13 left, the refs tell Hampson, hit the road, Jen. Foul now with just five points. Morgan Bailey picks up the slack inside, and General Steed knocks down another three before icing the game with this steal coming up. Cue that score. That's the nation's assist leader as she dished out nine dimes and scored 14 points in a 66-58 win. The Cougars don't have much time to revel in their win tomorrow. They're in Santa Clara playing the fifth-place Broncos. The Cougars own the series 4-1, to one, including a sweep last season. Ricky Radanovich leads the Broncos with 11.5 points a game. Youth will battle experience on the perimeter as sophomore guard Nikki Gilday goes up against seven-year grad student Haley Steed. We're still more than 200 days away from football season, but the Cougars have a 2013 schedule. The lineup will showcase some of the toughest opponents in recent BYU history. BYU opens a season on the road against the Virginia Cavaliers. Following a tough home test against Texas, the Cougars will face off against the Utes for the final time before the rivalry takes a two-year hiatus. Utah State will try to avenge their last two losses in Provo as they host the Cougars and Logan this season. And Boise State will be at LES for the first time since 2003. November will be a tough stretch for the Cougars as they take three road trips, including one to South Bend and another to Madison to take on the Notre Dame Irish and Wisconsin Badgers. The new schedule isn't the only off-season football news for Cougar fans, but it's not often that the announcement comes from Tom Holmo himself and on Twitter. CougTube reporter Sean Gordon joins us from the newsroom. Sean, what did Homo say that has fans even more excited for fall? Well, on Saturday, Homo replied to a fan's tweet with news that fans have been looking for for a few years, a united student section at Lavelle Edwards Stadium. 
They've helped make the Marriott Center one of the most intimidating places to play, and now the Rock will be out in full force for football. Starting in the fall, the students at LES will occupy the entire southeast corner of the stadium. I think it creates an atmosphere that, that we want. You know, 12,000, 13,000 students together create a lot of energy, create a lot of noise. And then we can start, hopefully, the goal would be to create some traditions in the stadium with students. It's a move that's taken a lot of planning, and the decision to change didn't come lightly. Well, this has been a lot of conversation with a lot of student groups over the years. And kind of the, what's come out of it is the students, you know, they want to sit together. They want to be together. So do diehard Cougar football fans approve of the change? I kind of think isolating it's a good idea. I think that might... Uh, end up being official for um, all the crowd because you're gonna get a lot of noise from that student section and, and it'll just, um, you know, it'll fan out the rest of the crowd that way. I think it'll make it just so like there's one part of the stadium where everyone's gonna just be crazy. Just everyone all together, it'll be really great. I think it would just kind of scare the, the other team a little bit more if we were spread around them, kind of surrounding them. Like it or not, the new student section will be ready to rock for football this fall. Well, the marketing department visited schools like Wisconsin and Penn State that have a unified student section, and they're hoping that The Rock can become a force like the students at those schools. In the newsroom, Sean Gordon, CoogTube. So are the student tickets going to still be reserved or become first come, first serve like basketball? Well, some of the details like that haven't been decided yet, but Almodova says that he expects things like that to be figured out within the next month. All right, thanks, Sean. BYU's defensive end Ziggy Ansah turned heads in Saturday's Senior Bowl when he had a total of seven tackles. Three and a half of them were for a loss and one forced fumble. Since he was named most outstanding player from the South, Ziggy may be attracting attention from some top NFL general managers. The Ravens and the 49ers are heading to Super Bowl 47 and bringing with them some local connections. Tight end Dennis Pitta is in his third year with the Ravens and still holds the record for career catches at BYU. Highland High School grad Haloti Nato will also be donning the purple and black as he lines up next to Orem native and Utah grad Paul Kruger. Watching from the Niner sideline will be former U quarterback Alex Smith. From walk-on status to Super Bowl contender, former BYU tight end Dennis Pitta continues to climb the football ladder. Pitta made a name for himself at BYU and he's continuing his success in the NFL. Ravens tight end is quickly becoming one of quarterback Joe Flacco's favorite targets, catching more than 60 passes this season, helping his team reach the Super Bowl. When CoogTube returns, high flying phenom, the man with the 12 foot reach is killing it on the volleyball court in his freshman campaign. And no pain, no gain, twists and tumbles make for bumps and bruises. How BYU gymnasts deal with injuries, stay with us. The BYU men's volleyball squad is fresh off a two week break after knocking off UC Irvine two weeks ago and stealing the number one spot in the country. They'll put that ranking on the line when they take on Long Beach State and Cal State Northridge this weekend. Last year, the Cougars split the series with the 49ers while bullying the Matadors 3-1 in their only 2012 rodeo. You can catch tonight's match against Long Beach State on BYU TV at 7 p.m. Freshman volleyball player Ben Patch has been the talk of the town as BYU's top recruit this season. Coop 2 reporter Rachel Schwartz gives us an inside look at how we made it to the Division I level. The 6'8 freshman from Provo brings an impressive resume to the Cougar volleyball team. His skills earned him the title of MVP of the North Sika Junior Championships in 2012. BYU's head coach Chris McGowan is looking for Patch to further develop those skills as the team's opposite. His athletic ability allows him to do things that uh, are unbelievable. He comes in with a smile on his face every day. He's been working really hard. Uh, the hard part for him is that he's got a lot of ground to make up because he hasn't played a lot of volleyball. Patch is hitting 227 after six games, so there is some room for improvement, but starting on the top ranked team in Division I volleyball is an impressive feat for Patch, who didn't even know the sport existed before entering high school. I was at a family reunion and all my cousins were out playing this sand sport and I'd literally not seen volleyball ever in my life. I'm like, what is this? Going home, I'm like, mom, I gotta start playing the sport. This is awesome. What a lot of people don't know is that Ben Patch started his volleyball career here at Provo High just a few short years ago. The Bulldogs don't have a men's team, so Ben spent his afternoon learning the basics with the girls team. Playing at the college level has proved to be a new challenge for Patch. He can touch just under 12 feet on his vertical, but says he is still adjusting to competing against taller opponents and holding his own, taking sets side by side with all-star Taylor Sander. Okay, this is kind of my little secret, but everyone pretty, pretty, pretty much knows. Taylor Sander is like pretty much my idol. You know, it's something that I'm actually trying to work for is to be as good as him. In Provo, Rachel Schwartz, CoogTube.
Good grief. I need Ben Patch to share some of that vertical with myself. Look for Patch to make a big contribution this weekend against Long Beach State as the Cougars fight to hold on to their number one spot in the country. BYU Gymnastics put up the team's best score this season against Boise State on Thursday. BYU even had a few score career highs, but it wasn't enough. Slip-ups un on the e uneven bars and missed landing on the vault left just enough room for the Broncos to walk away from the Smith Fieldhouse with a razor-thin win. Cougs will have a chance for redemption this Saturday as they travel to Boise for a rematch against the nation's 21st ranked gymnastics team. Injuries have crippled the team in the past seasons this year, but they're not letting those setbacks keep them from scoring high. CoogTube reporter Stephanie Campbell shows us how these girls are taking it to the mat. The Cougar tumblers make gymnastics look easy, but in reality it is a difficult and dangerous sport that takes a toll on their bodies. These Lady Cougars have a high pain tolerance, suffering through many different types of injuries to get to where they are now. I've had a cracked heel, broken ankle, um, bruised calcaneus, broken ribs, broken toes, jammed fingers, and a bruised sternum, and just recently surgery on both of my feet. Everyone gets bumps and bruises, but only two girls are currently out for the season. Casey Gassaway had surgery on injuries that were not healing, and vault sensation Madeline Nilsson is out with a torn ACL. It's a pretty high-risk sport for that kind of thing. I've been pretty lucky. This is my first like major injury, but a lot of girls do get hurt at some point. From twisted ankles and bruises to torn ACLs and foot surgeries, these girls have seen it all and have learned to perform through the pain. They know that injuries are going to happen, but they still work to prevent and heal these problems. The injury rate in gymnastics is 100%. So everybody gets hurt, everybody takes a ding at some point in time or another. You know, you stay on top of it, you try to, you know, rest them enough, you try to work out when you can, you try to pay attention to things that are hurting and limit, um, limit pounding on those things. Even some of the girls who are competing have to limit themselves because they're all healing from one thing or another. And there's no break for these Cougars. Tonight they'll have to keep fighting through the pain as they have a rematch against Boise State after a close loss to the Broncos last week. Corey? Wow, that's a tough way to lose. That was yeah. pretty close to Boise Oof. State. Well, when CoogTube returns, bring the bets. It's a new season and a new coach for the Cougars on the diamond. And what a racket. It's not the Australian Open, but BYU Tennis is serving up a second straight winning match. We'll be right back. BYU Rugby is picking up right where he left off last season, slicing through opponents like a hot knife through butter. UCLA was that unfortunate dairy product on Saturday. The Cougs rolled the Bruins 84-14 to keep their perfect season intact. UCLA has had a rough time with BYU in recent history, losing 103-24 in Provo back in May. Gloomy winter is still haunting Provo, but it's time the BYU boys of summer come back. CoogTube reporter Fong Pham visits the Cougar baseball team to experience the harmony among players just before the start of the new season. The BYU baseball team looks to lead off the season with a whole new coaching staff. Coach Mike Littlewood brought his three assistants from Dixie State as he rejoins the Cougar after more than 20 years. Having worked with the team since last June, Coach Littlewood brings a winning attitude that gave him success in his 16 years coaching in St. George. We have a really nice core of position players and, and a really nice core of pitchers. We don't have a lot of depth, um, but I think overall the attitude and um, just the will to win, these guys are hungry to win, uh, and that, that's going to go a long way. The guys get along. Littlewood plans to mix up starting positions, with junior Jacob Bruckman switching up his view of home plate. I love it. I love center field. Um, it's kind of a home for me, uh, even though I did play right field. For the past two years, I, I found that comfortable. Um, but, you know, once I moved back this fall to center field, I started playing and practice. It was like home. With high spirit and great determination, members of the Cougar baseball team are confident that they'll catch more success this season. The Cougars start their season with a four game series at the Brooks Wallace Classic in Texas on February 15. On BYU campus, Fong Fam, Cook 2. Coach Littlewood knows how to win. The Cougs posted three 40 win seasons with him at third base. Dixie State took home the 2004 Juco World Series title with Littlewood as head coach. The softball team hit the ball out of the park by grabbing the top spot in the Pacific Coast Softball Conference preseason poll of 2013. BYU got 48 of the votes, followed by Loyola Marymount with 39 and San Diego with 32. The Lady Cougars will play against Colorado State in the Red Desert Classic for their season opener on February 7th. 
The BYU men's track and field team is hurtling their way to the Big Apple as they compete in the New Balance Invitational. Coach Robinson says this meet is the biggest event of the indoor track season. The Cougs will be one of 10 teams at the meet ranked in the top 25. They'll be going toe to toe with the nation's top four teams. The men's team isn't the only one tearing it up on the track. The women's team started its season off right at the Washington Invitational. Kelsey Brown finished first in the 800 meters with a time of just under 205. Not only did this move her closer to a BYU record, but it also ranks her fifth in the entire nation. Women's tennis beat down Utah State Saturday and used a dramatic doubles win to do so. After the Aggie winner, Megan Sheehan Dazon and Nicolette Tran regroup and nail this nifty backhander down the line. Then Sheehan Dazon with some work at the net. BYU wins the match 7-6. No smooth sailing after that, Cougars coast to the 6-1 victory. Although this is only the second year in the West Coast Conference for the men's tennis team, they have already smashed their name into the polls for this up and coming season. The coaches' preseason poll picks the Cougs to finish fourth overall, the same spot they finished in last year. They also selected junior Patrick Kaka to join the preseason all conference team. Well, great news for our tennis teams then. Yeah, for sure. excited. When Coug Tube comes back, we'll find out who our experts think will be this year's Super Bowl champion. And the sun's a shine, and the Cougars came home with a victory, and hopefully it only gets better. Your 11 News weather when we return. Well, the Cougars eked out the win against Pepperdine, and they brought back the sun from Malibu. It is a scintillating day outside. We got blue skies. Uh, it's a little bit cold at 16 degrees, but the sun is out there warming everything up. Calm with the wind. Humidity is high, 93% on that. So it, it's a pretty nice day. I'm enjoying it. I like the sun. really warms up my face. Tomorrow, when Santa Clara comes to visit the Marriott Center, we've got the game day forecast for you. A high of 38. There's going to be a slight haze. Look out for that. The sunset is at 5.45 p.m., which is a little early, but it doesn't matter because we're all going to be in the Marriott Center anyway. When we take a look at the nation, we've got a high in Utah right here, which has been a theme, and it's pushing this from the northwest. There's snow right here, but it's not going to hit us, so we're going to have a chance to get this snow melted out um, and maybe see a little bit of green grass. I don't know. I don't know if it's still there. We go to the highs in the state. I'm not too happy. Unfortunately, Provo is the lowest at 16 degrees, which is really odd. You've got Vernal at 20, Logan at 34, Wendover at 28. Those are usually the lows. Cedar City and St. George down here at 39 and Salt Lake City at 35. You also have Nephi at 21. Moving on to our five-day forecast. This is really nice. It's, it's going to stay pretty warm, 45 and 40, for the next couple of days. Getting early into next week, it's going to dip a little bit at 39s. But as we get further and later into the week, it's going to warm back up for us. So I'm excited for that lovely warm weather. All right, it's time for the first predictions of the winter. BYU men's basketball takes on Santa Clara Saturday. And you may have heard about a little matchup called the Super Bowl between the San Francisco 49ers and the Baltimore Ravens. All right, everyone, buff up on their stats. <laughs> Corey, let's start with you. What do you think? All right, I have BYU taking it, taking Santa Clara down. I think they're going to welcome being home finally after that three-game road trip. As far as the Super Bowl, obviously, I wish my Packers were in it, but I'm still a little bitter <laughs> so about sad. that. So Hence, sad. maybe why I'm going with Baltimore. I think Baltimore can actually squeak out the win against San Fran. Okay, we'll see what happens. Sean, what do you think? Well, I think it's going to be a lot tougher game between BYU and Santa Clara than people realize. Santa Clara is a great shooting team, especially from the three-point line, which is going to keep them in any game. But I think home advantage, I think BYU still takes it. And then on the Super Bowl side, um, Colin Kaepernick's a freshman. I think that he's going to finally, it's going to catch up to him. He's going to make some mistakes. And Baltimore's playing possessed, so I take Baltimore in that one. Okay, Clint, what do you think? Well, Santa Clara's really good with Mark with Mark Trasolini and Kevin Foster at that guard forward combo, but I really think I would take Brandon and Brandon Davies and Tyler Haas nine days out of the week. So I'm gonna go with the Cougars. Nine I'm days not, out not of the sure week. You, that your, works your, exactly. your math skills match your bow tie style. <laughs> oh, leave man. it to our leave it to our weatherman to come up with nine days out of the week. You know, yeah. that's just how it is. As for the Super Let's Bowl, see. I think Colin Kaepernick is gonna be the one crying at the end of the game when Ray Lewis puts the hurt on him. <laughs> I've got the Ravens wow. as well. Okay, we'll have to see. Apparently, I'm uh, the only one here that <laughs> believes in Colin Kaepernick. Uh, I went ahead and picked the 49ers for that one. 
And as far as the BYU game goes, I'm picking BYU. You know, I'm going to be there to cheer them on. I'd like to think I could be a you know lucky charm for yeah. them there. So we'll have Gotta to see what happens. So we've all got BYU against Santa Clara. Yep. And then the only one that's that's it's just person from us is Carson. <laughs> so it's going to be really great when we come back next week, <laughs> and I can you know. I still think it could go either way though. It's both teams great defenses, great running game, a good passing game, but I think Baltimore takes it. Mm -hmm. I agree okay. with you, Sean. I think actually Ray Rice is going to be able to, to get some yardage against the mm -hmm. San Fran defense. You saw in the games that San Fran has played so far in the playoffs that some of the offenses have been able to find their way, especially in some of the gaps in their defense. And so I think that Baltimore can find some holes in there. Jacoby Jones, uh, Rice. Uh, uh, there's a lot of people that I think that can really make a difference for Baltimore. It's, it's definitely going to be a defensive battle for sure. You know, I'm pretty sure, though, that Baltimore is going to come out with this one with Ray Lewis leading that. I think there will be more scoring than people realize. Though. Well, we'll have to see. Yeah, it we'll is see. a Super Bowl. We'll see. So. Well, I guess we'll Crush find out. All right, that's KookTube for Friday, February 1st. If you want another look at the stories we did today or to share with your friends, check out the KookTube section of our website, 11news.byu.edu. Thanks for joining us. Have a great afternoon, and go Cougs. Thank you.